So hello everyone, uh, welcome to this conference. My name is Ken, I'm a data analyst at Bablacar, and this is Nicola, data scientist at Bablacar. We are both uh, in a data marketing team, and uh, we, uh, we work on all the data-related subject, subject for the marketing uh, squad. And today we will uh, present you the new attribution model that we developed within Bablacar. So a little word about uh, Bablacar before, we are the world leading long distance ride sharing community. Um, we connect people seeking to travel with driver uh, going the same way. So this allows people to uh, travel together and also split the cost. Initially we were only uh, a business of carpooling but we have expand expanded our business with buses today and we are operating in 22 countries all around the world. All around the world. Our mission is to become um, ultimately the go-to marketplace for shared travel. So, what's today's agenda? I'll give you first a little context about digital marketing, marketing and what is the attribution model. The second part by uh, Nicola will be the core subject, the attribution model itself, and lastly, the first resu result that we had. So, today in marketing, uh, our uh, marketing stakeholders are investing a lot of money online, but uh, there are a few steps before a conversion of a we are investing so that people uh, use our services. And we can split that in four steps. The first one is awareness. So we are investing money so that people know our services that is available using display ads or YouTube ads, display being banners on websites. The second step, once uh, they are aware of our um, service, it would be interest. So people may be seeking to travel from London to Manchester. And now we want to show them that we exist and that our services is, is, avail is available. So. Uh, paid search ads in Google, Yahoo, or Bing could be used. And lastly, uh, the conservation. So people already, maybe has already searched uh, a, a trip in Belbacar, but has not uh, converted yet. And the last step is the uh, action, so the booking in our case. Uh, so this is what we call a funnel. Uh, the high funnel being the first steps, and the last step is the low funnel. And the attribution model is actually the way to measure the efficiency of each ad, each type of campaign that we have. So um, the attribution model finally allows, allows us to understand the, uh, each channel's profitability and therefore create a custom strategies for each channel. Our previous method before we implement the new one was the last click sorted day attribution model. And let's see what it does, what it did. So uh, let's say, uh, take a Concrete example with someone who clicks on a display ad, so a banner on a website on day minus 29. Two weeks later, he goes on Facebook and clicks on another ad. And then in day minus five, he does a research, carpooling London, Manchester on Google, and then comes to Belbacar and today does a booking of three carpool teams. So the last click attribution model, 30 days, so 30 days because we look at all the clicks 30 days, up to 30 days before. The last click model will attribute the whole conversion here, let's say a revenue of 50 euros to Google. And we will know today, in that, with the previous model, that Google generated 50 euros and zero for Facebook and zero for display. And as you can imagine, this is not optimal at all because the low funnel channel will be overestimated and the high funnel channel will, will be difficult to measure its efficiency and therefore our, the, um, the marketing stakeholders will adapt their strategy and not invest enough on those ads because of that. So at Belbacar, we use the last click uh, attribution model. There's a lot of uh, other ones. The first click, for example, the linear model where we maybe you give a uh, proportion of, uh, of the co conversion um, equally. And that's what we, we call a rule-based model. And the good thing about those models is, are that, is that they're easy to understand, easy to compute, but the choices are arbitrary. And depending on the model you use, the results are different. So now what we wanted to do is to uh, create a model that is more based on mathematics, on statistics, and therefore use a data-driven attribution model that can evaluate each channel's influence on the conversion. The downside of that is that uh, it's uh, really expensive to compute and it's less easy to understand as a elastic model, for example. So uh, developing a model just uh, before uh, going to the core uh, subject, uh, required uh, great efforts from different teams. So our marketing stakeholders, obviously, who shared our, uh, their insight about uh, the business, the requirement, because all the tools that we create is for, for them to use. Uh, the data, data analysts and data scientists for us, we uh, did the technical development and also the, some data engineers and 
uh, software engineers were here for the industrialization of the model. So now I'll let uh, Nicola continue to the second part. Yeah. Thank you. So now that we all have some basis in marketing, we'll ex I'll explain you a bit more how our model works. So first, to build a data-driven model, you obviously need data. Um, to build that, we focus on the last, we'll take a time window of seven days. We'll get all the, all the conversions that happen in this seven-day window. And for each one of these conversions, we'll get all the clicks that happen up to 30 days before. In the end, what we do is to remove the dates, the date of the clicks, and we aggregate all this data together so we have just uh, sequences of uh, touch points and the, the number of conversions that's, that have these same sequences of uh, channel. So now we have our data and uh, we want to build a multi-touch uh, attribution model that is based on Markov, so, uh, so we all have a common knowledge. I will explain a bit how the Markov model is built. So on the left side of the slide, you have an example of the funnel data. So the first row means uh, we have click on channel A, then a click on channel B, that leads in the end to one conversion. And that's the same interpretation for all the other rows. So in Markov model is a, is a graph-based model, and in our case, every node will be representing a type of channels, and we have two specific nodes, which are the null and conversion one, which are the, the output of the funnel. To derive the transition probabilities from one node to the other, what we do is uh, basically just count uh, the number of times a user, for instance, uh, the number of times a user starting, started his journey with a click on channel A. Here it's 60% uh, of the time. So for 40% of the time, a user starts his journey with uh, channel B. And we do the same thing from, uh, from channel A to channel B. So when a user has clicked on channel A, what is the probability that a user clicked on channel B and 20%? And we do that for every node. And so we have probabilities. We have a model that represents uh, the raw data that we got. <laughs> so in the end, we have a probabilistic representation of the raw data. And now, the key qu now what we want to know is to calculate the attribution, so meaning the contribution of every channel. And to do that, we actually take the problem on the opposite tail, meaning uh, we ask the key question, what would have happened if a channel had not existed? And to answer to this question, we, take, we make a strong assumption, that is, uh, all funnels that contain this specific channel would not have converted if the channel had not existed. So uh, concretely, how does it translate to? Uh, so again, we have our raw data. We say, uh, okay, for, we want to calculate the attribution for channel A. So every pass that contains the channel A becomes unsuccessful. Here, uh, the outcome is nil. So that's uh, one way of doing it. Obviously, you see here that there are still no Markov model that is used, and that's because, uh, we, that's because we have calculating it with the raw data is really, really intensive because we can have funnels that are, uh, in our case, up to uh, 10 clicks, and we have, at, uh, we have uh, like uh, 200 different touch points. So if you calculate all the different combinations, that makes it uh, really, that can take a really, really long time to calculate. And therefore, that's why the, um, the Markov model is for. So concretely, it translates to uh, for node A, we'll, we'll say, OK, node A becomes a new node, meaning all, all walks that land on this node will become unsuccessful, and it won't uh, go any longer. Uh, so in the end, what we do uh, to calculate the effect is to calculate the initial conversion rate. So when there are every channel that are present, here it's uh, 60%. We compare to the conversion rate without the channel uh, A, in our case, so it's 20%. And we do the difference that give us uh, what we call a removal effect. And uh, this will be the basic, the base for calculating the, the attribution that is uh, to do the parallel with machine learning, like uh, the importance of, uh, of a channel. Uh, 
so in the end, we have this process, and we repeat that for uh, every KPI we are interested in, and we'll do it uh, on a weekly basis because at the beginning we we take a funnel, uh, we take time window of seven days. However, what we can say, what we can see, if we look a bit closer to the output, so the output means in the last seven days the channel A contributed to X1 conversion. However, this contribution are uh, are linked to, clicked, to clicks that happen up to 30 days before the conversion, and therefore we can see here that the time window uh, of the clicks can be up to 37 days and zero days. Therefore, the raw output as it is is not usable by the marketing teams because they want to know what the precise uh, optimization they make, such as uh, budget changes or such as uh, uh, different targeting different audiences, what are the outcome of these changes they made, and uh, this output is not usable as it is. So therefore, the, it is not, we cannot use, use it as it is, uh, because we don't have the information at the click date level, and also at the beginning, we chose uh, channel granularity that was uh, um, low enough to guarantee uh, statistically significance of the, of the model. And therefore, we needed to, to uh, bring improvement to this model. So what we want to do, if we keep the parallel with machine learning, is that uh, actually at the previous slide, we have something like a global importance for the channel. And now we want to switch from global importance to local importance, meaning we want to redistribute the, the conversion funnel by funnel. So the... Um, what we want to do is actually to take the global importance and to keep this uh, percentage distribution and to redistribute uh, funnel by funnel. But actually, if we do that, and if we want to check, uh, if we want to, if we take a channel, so let's say channel E, channel A, and we sum up all the attribution for channel A, so funnel by funnel, we'll end up with um, uh, an attribution that is different from the original one, which is uh, actually uh, normal. So what we want to do to redistribute it correctly and to remain consistent with the first output is just to say, okay, we have a metric that we want to optimize, which is we want to redistribute the conversion such that um, when we sum up all the attribution funnel by funnel, we end up with the same number that was originally outputted. And this uh, objective function can therefore be given to uh, an optimizer, so it will output the optimal weights to, uh, to redistribute it funnel by funnel. And doing that is, uh, is really uh, useful because at the end, we'll be able to do what we intended to do. That's quite strange. Uh, what we intended to do is to uh, redistribute, so to have for the complete funnel that Ken uh, presented us earlier, to have the contribution of uh, every click. So every click means uh, a date and also the campaign that the user has uh, clicked on. Um, so yeah, the slide is quite big, so it should be uh, 0 0.8, then 1.6, then 0 0.6. Uh, in the end, when we have that, the difficulty is to estimate like, what is the benefits of uh, switching from a last click model to this kind of model. And that's what uh, Ken will present us in the third part. Thank you. So um, before uh, looking at some results that we have, uh, we can do some sanity checks. So we have two models now, two outputs, one with the multi attribution model, one with the last click model, and there's something that we can check, sanity check, is the overall volume of conversion. It's not because we changed the attribution model that we, we have suddenly more conversion for one model than, a, than, a, than the other one. So that's what we have on the upper side of this graph. Uh, in uh, June 2022, we have almost the same volume of this selected KPI, let's say uh, booking, and uh, uh, also, through time, the, the, the number of conversions should not be uh, very different. You can have some differences, obviously, but not that, uh, not that, not that large. Those, those, dif those equality, if I may say, are for the globality, but uh, the distribution across channel should be different, and that's what we want uh, 
to, to look at. So the marketing contribution uh, has increased thanks to the new model. Why? There were some channels, uh, so A, B, uh, that uh, Nicolas presented, where uh, that are not considered as marketing, but were the last click model were uh, giving a lot of conversion to them. But today, with the new, the new attribution model, we were able to take some, some conversion to them and attribute it to channels that are marketing. So display, maybe YouTube, as we will see uh, a bit later. And so there's two KPIs, for example, really important for us in Belbacar is the generation of new driver, because uh, we uh, provide services. So we connect the drivers and passengers, so we need drivers. So we had 7% more drivers attributed to marketing channels and 3% uh, uh, new booking attributed to marketing. This led directly to an overall marketing ROI increase by uh, 6%. And uh, this, this data is only for France from January to July 2022. But if you remember, in the first part, we were like, we said that like, uh, the high funnel channels were maybe underestimated, and we were not investing enough on those channels. Let's see the, uh, some of the, the, the performances that we have. So uh, with the new model, so the Google Display Ad, which is a high funnel channel, uh, we, the ROI increased by 13%. And another uh, campaign type, which is the Google App Campaign, we had an ROI increased by 10%. So, and uh, obviously we were able to measure that uh, some low funnel channel ROI decreased. We have less conversion for them. And therefore we had a better understanding of uh, high funnel channels performances. And therefore uh, already our marketing stakeholders were able to allocate the budget uh, accordingly and maybe uh, um, uh, spend more money on high, level, high funnel channels where we, d we didn't use to do that. And but now, we, now they, they are able to do it. So, um, three takeaways. So first, the rule-based attribution model are built on a priori assumption, and therefore, depending on the model you use, you have different results. Have, uh, whereas, the multi-touch attribution model uh, is based on mathematics and can evaluate the influence of each channel. And lastly, uh, with this model in the LACA, we were able to measure that the high funnel channels ORID impro improved, and therefore, we improved our spending allocations. Um, so, thank you very much.